everyone. Thank you so much to Holy Cross Pro-Life Committee for having me speak at this year's 2021 Ecumenical Memorial Prayer Vigil, uh, commemorating 49 years of Roe v. Wade, legalized abortion in the United States. It's a sad day that we've come to nearly half a century and the slaughter of innocent human life continues. I was conceived when my birth mother was abducted at knife point by a serial rapist in October of 1968. And in January of 1969, my birth mother sought to kill me at two illegal abortions and I was almost aborted. She backed out because of the conditions and the fact that it was illegal in Michigan at the time. There was a 1931 law which protected me. No exceptions, 100% pro-life. And I literally owe my birth to that law which protected me exactly four years prior to Roe versus Wade. And I wasn't lucky, I was protected. When I met, met my birth mother when I was 19, she was very happy to meet me, but she told me that if abortion had been legal, she would have aborted me. And even if she had to do it all over again, she said to me, you don't know what it was like. And I know that's true. I don't know what it was like for her, but I know that she's okay. Life went on and I know that I'm a blessing to her. It was six years after we met that she had finally changed her mind about abortion. When my niece in Florida was in an unplanned pregnancy with my birth mother's first great-grandchild. And it was that niece who changed her heart on the issue of abortion. And now decades later, my birth mother and I are so thankful that the law protected us, protected us both from the horror of abortion. We cannot let people forget that we're talking about real people, especially when talking about Roe versus Wade. How many of you know that Norma McCorvey, Jane Roe from Roe versus Wade gave birth in that case to a daughter? This was not some fictitious, theoretical, philosophical legal entity called a fetus, but a real person and a woman, no less, who was targeted for abortion in that case. This is not just a theoretical discussion, but real lives who are at stake, who are at risk. And there's real people like me who are still living today because of that protection legality matters. My life matters. And I tell people that, you know, if your mother chose life for you, how nice for you, that must feel wonderful. But mine didn't, she chose abortion. And pro-life advocates chose life for me. And they are my heroes. Some of us are in need of heroes. I went through a tragedy this past year. Um, 2020 was absolutely the worst year of my life. Um, I'd been through tragedy in the past. I've overcome a lot in my life. Um, I lost a baby girl, my second adopted child, Cassie, over 20 years ago. She was born with a very serious genetic disorder 
and most of the babies who have what she had, which is called DeGeorge syndrome, it's chromosome 22, section Q11, there was a 0.2 deletion of information and that caused a lot of significant anomalies. And most of those babies were aborted. Um, let me tell you, it was an honor to take care of her and Cassie's life mattered. And tragically, a cardiologist took her off of oxygen when she wasn't ready to be and she stopped breathing and she was resuscitated twice and then died in her arms at 33 days old and that was up to that point absolutely the most painful thing I'd ever been through in my life but it was an honor to take care of her. I adopted two others. Our first adopted child is Caleb and his birth mother was 16 and her grandparents my boy's great-grandparents were pro-life activists and they set the example for Nicole, for our boy's birth mother. Despite some poor choices that she was making, um, she struggled with drug abuse and alcoholism for years and years, as did her mother. Uh, her father and his father both died of alcohol abuse in their 30s. Um, <clears throat> but she valued life. She was pro-life because of the example set by her grandparents. And got Caleb at a day old, found out the morning he was born that she had picked us and brought him home the next day. And we got his half-brother when Caleb was um, two and a half, Kyler was a year old when we adopted him. She had been doing heroin and tested positive four times during the pregnancy, ended up in jail, um, including a week before he was born. And then inexplicably, they let her take him home from the hospital and his biological father tried to drown him when he was nine weeks old and in the news and we looked into getting him and then ultimately um, adopted Kyler at a year old so that he could be raised with his half-brother <sighs> um, thinking that they would be you know better off if they could be raised together and Kyler was kind of haywire from the time we got him um, he struggled with impulse control uh, but it, he was an awesome kid. Uh, Caleb was absolutely brilliant. Um, and Kyler was uh, an amazing athlete, fearless. And <clears throat> I homeschooled them until Caleb was in seventh grade. They traveled around the country with me. Uh, with my three daughters, I gave birth to three daughters after adopting the two boys. So um, raised five children together and it was absolutely awesome. Uh, I taught my kids about abortion from a very young age and Caleb, I remember being outside of McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And the Students for Life group were walking us out to our car and pointed and said that this hospital is where most of the abortions are done in this area. And Caleb stopped in his tracks at five years old and he said, they're doing abortions in there right now. We should go in there and stop them. And we all looked at each other like, duh, like of course. But I had to explain to him how if we did that we would be arrested. He's like, why would they arrest you? They should be arresting them, the ones who are, who are killing babies. And I had to explain about the Supreme Court because the same thing happened in Canada that happened in the United States. And he said, well, then we need to get rid of those judges. And then I explained about the presidency and how we have to vote for, for pro-life presidents so they can appoint the pro-life justices. and. And he said, well, then we need to vote for pro-life presidents. And then he just could not fathom 
how decades had gone by and nothing had been done yet. And he couldn't understand why everybody doesn't know what's going on. He said, don't they know? Why, why don't they vote pro-life? I mean, it's the easiest thing to do. Vote, vote pro-life. And I remember, I mean, five years old, he, he understood he got it. And yet there's so many adults who just don't think it matters. But he got it. And um, I remember him in Ireland with me at seven and a half years old and seeing big signs with aborted babies at a street rally where I was to be speaking. And he asked me, Mom, is that real? I had to tell him, yeah, yeah, that's real. And after a while, he told me, Mom, I can't look at that anymore. And then a couple of years later, he saw the photos I was looking at on my computer from Priest for Life, where you see the images of the arms or legs of aborted babies next to a, a dime or a quarter to provide perspective. So you can see the humanity of those aborted children and see their size. And, and he asked me again, you know, is, is that real? And um, I explained what we were looking at. And he just said to me, that's murder. That's murder. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, my son, Kyler, when he was about 11 years old, he wrote out his story. Um, my birth mom was a teen drug addict. Should I have been aborted? And he shared about his life, you know, saying that I'm a good kid and, you know, volunteer at church and I'm, I'm a good sibling. And he talked about his sports and all sorts of things and, you know, said that, uh, you know, how he was blessed, lucky because his birth mother chose life. But only 1% in unplanned pregnancies choose life today and over 50% abort. And he said that, um, you know, it's not just the fortunate who deserve life. Um, really powerful story, I'm so proud. And my organization, Save the One, published it and it got published in Life News, Life Site News, Live Action. Um, they republished it again recently. Uh, but what a, what a neat kid. Um, both of my sons struggled uh, in recent years, starting with vaping and then alcohol and marijuana, and then eventually experimenting with some other things. And this summer, they um, thought that they were taking Percocet pills, but there was no Percocet in the pills and they were 100% fentanyl. And um, on July 29th, they passed away. Caleb was 20 years old and Kyler at 18, along with a 17-year-old girl. And it's uh, an absolute horrible tragedy. But I see that it's the same spirit of death, this culture of death, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, but Christ came that we may have life and have it to the full. And I'm grateful um, for the words of Jesus when he, you know, he said that no one can snatch them from my hands, ultimately. And I know that um, when they first believed, they were marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit as a deposit in their inheritance. Uh, and I think of the parable of the prodigal son and I know how I would receive them and you know Jesus said like 
he talked about what son asks for a fish and the father gives him a snake and he says and you being sinful if you know how to give good gifts how much more so will your father in heaven lavish you know good gifts on his children and i know that um you know he is that good father who welcomes them and um i have peace that i know where my three adopted children are <sighs> But I want people to know how special my sons were, how special they, they still are. And I know that they pray for all of us. Um, obviously, there are a lot of things that I would have done differently. You know, looking back, um, I gave them every warning, you know, knowing that they were at risk more than most parents ever would. Uh, one thing I absolutely would not have done differently was to adopt my sons, uh, Caleb and Kyler, and my daughter Cassie. Their lives matter. They were absolutely precious. And every child deserves the opportunity, the opportunity to live and to experience love like my children did. Uh, even though their lives were short, they were well loved. And every child deserves that chance. Just like my son Kyler said. Uh, this culture of death um, isn't going to stop with a new Supreme Court. You know, we all need to leave a legacy within our families like my boy's great-grandparents did you know set that example for your your children your grandchildren your great-grandchildren um we need to always support our local pregnancy resource centers we can't have the same uh, conditions that existed prior to roe versus wade where there weren't these types of places available and we've we, come so far there's so many more resources now and of course we will always need always need to continue that there will always be this battle um i can't stand when i hear people suggest that uh, they're progressive you know if they're supporting abortion rights that that's progressive when that is absolutely antiquated because it's been from the times of antiquity that there has been child sacrifice. This is nothing new. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. And the battle to protect innocent human life has gone on since time immemorial, and, and it will continue. And we all need to be steadfast, and we need to pass the baton and pass on our values to the next generation. To continue this fight because it's not going to end here on earth and we are responsible for making sure that everyone is protected um, we're told to rescue those who are being led away to death hold back those who are staggering towards slaughter and if you say but we knew nothing of this does not he who weighs the heart perceive it does not he who guards your life know it will he not repay each person according to what he has done um, that's from proverbs 24 verses 11 through 12 and each one of us are expected to be those rescuers those heroes uh, that we're called to be and so i just want to uh, encourage everyone uh, don't relent don't quit don't stop um, it's not just about overturning Roe versus Wade but this battle is going to continue on and we need to persevere because every life matters and thank you so much for coming today and let's never forget the lives that have been lost and the gift that we've each been given and our own responsibilities. Thank you.